and flexible program curating. So we'll go ahead and get started and give you an, uh, an introduction. As I mentioned, type in any questions that you have into the chat box. So as some of you may know, some of you probably don't know yet, but are about to find out, the web development bootcamp that we have here at Thinkful is a program that we've structured to take you from a beginning position with programming to an employee developer engineer position. The program itself is focused around one-on-one -on -one mentorship, and it covers a full stack curriculum that also includes the computer science concepts, the practical computer science concepts, and the developer tools that you need to not only successfully land your new job, but perform well at your future role. Because the entire pro uh, point of the program really is to help you transition onto a full-time job, it has to have a very, uh, very com uh, mm -hmm. comprehensive and not only successfully land your job component. Overall, the program has a track record of success. We've seen 93% of our graduates transition into roles as developers or engineers within four months of completing the course. And we're also working with graduates and students with really different backgrounds. Most that are coming to Thinkful are true beginners to programming, but there are a couple here and there that have some experience just with different technologies. Now, regardless of what your personal history with programming is, we strongly believe that the path to your new career as a developer begins with the one-on-one -on -one mentorship that you receive. And for that reason, everything that we do at Thinkful is focused around that one-on-one -on -one mentorship interaction. Research has proven many times that one-on-one -on -one really is the most effective way to learn. And at Thinkful, personal mentorship means a learning experience that's tailored exactly around who you are as an individual student. This means that your personal mentor is able to pick up on your learning style and can therefore identify components of the curriculum that you may have some trouble with or that you can move through more quickly because you've worked with that concept in the past. It also means that you're going to have every single question you have about the curriculum or the projects that you're working on or the industry overall answered by a professional who is entirely devoted to your success and is going to pass on the many years of experience that you have as the, um, that they have as engineers onto. Because the one-on-one -on -one mentorship component of any Thinkful uh, program, particularly the Web Development Bootcamp, is so important, it's also incredibly important that we're selecting incredible engineers who serve as great mentors for the Thinkful program. Overall, the engineers that work for Thinkful have an average of 10 years of experience working as professionals in the industry, but they also have the right personality type and the right qualities that would make them an incredible mentor. The hiring process that we have here at Thinkful is incredibly rigorous. And to give you an overview of how rigorous that hiring process really is, in the past calendar year or so, we've spoken to about 1,000 mentors, or 1,000 candidates rather, who wish to become Thinkful mentors, but we've selected fewer than 20% of those. And two great examples of mentors who made the cut are the two individuals that you see on screen now. Tristy, for example, has been a software architect at companies like Accenture and Adobe. And more recently, she's focused her attention around a site that encourages women to get into tech. Um, she is a complete JavaScript master, and she's worked honestly with every library and framework that's ever been written for JavaScript. Um, so she's definitely a mentor that we've paired with many students who have a strong desire and one joining the tech industry and becoming JavaScript master themselves, but also working with someone who's coming from a background that's very intense and professional with engineering. JP, on the right side of your screen, is coming from a design background. and He's someone who has, over the past several years, as an engineer, built award-winning sites for Nike and HP, and he's very excited about doing great things with graphic work in terms of uh, what you can do with jQuery and JavaScript um, as programming languages and frameworks, or like libraries for front-end development. As I mentioned, both Tristy and JP are mentors who have the qualities and the personalities that take to be a thankful mentor because they're able to have empathy. They're able to work with, with individual students. They're able to work with students that have different personality types and take the time that, it, that each student needs in order to learn something that can be as complicated as programming. And because you're interacting with every single mentor that works for Thinkful once a week, uh, or not once a week, sorry, multiple times a week, every single week of the program, it's important that the, the person that we're pairing with you is a, that we're pairing you with is a great match. Your mentor really is going to become your new best friend in development. And the way that you interact with them is every week, one-on-one, -on -one, through personal one-on-one -on -one sessions that are scheduled over video chat with screen sharing. Now, there isn't necessarily a typical one-on-one -on -one session because you, and as a student in the program overall, are really going to evolve as time goes by. Um, however, there are a couple of things that you're going to spend uh, doing through a lot of these one-on-one -on -one sessions. On weeks where you are focusing on learning new concepts or understanding how something within JavaScript works, you and your mentor are going to spend the one-on-one -on -one sessions having the mentor uh, answer any questions that you have about the curriculum or having them actually teach you components that you're learning. On weeks where you're spending your time building projects, like your capstone projects or the small projects in the program, you and your mentor are going to spend a lot of time evaluating the work that you've completed, 
and discussing the best practices for a specific implementation. You're really, you're really going to spend a lot of time pair programming and building the portfolio that you're going to be using to showcase your skills to employers. And one thing to emphasize here is uh, they're not here just for technical development and helping you get through the curriculum and finish your portfolio, but they're also here for moral support. They're here to motivate you when you feel like you're stuck or if you feel like you can't do this and you can't be a developer, any, any fears about that. Um, they're here to motivate you during those times, and they're also here to help you vent. If you ever just need to kind of vent of you being frustrated or you needing additional help, like the mentor is there for whatever you need. And any feedback you share with the mentor will, will go back to the programmatic. So someone like myself, I work with a lot of one-on-one -on -one mentors uh, for our full-time students, and I catch up with them every few weeks and learn exactly how the program is going. So it's really important that you have a good relationship with your mentor beyond just them being like a tutor for you. Correct. And the mentor is also there to make sure that you stay engaged in the programming, that you are excited about programming itself. Making sure that they reach out when you need support, that they encourage you to reach out yourself when you need the help, and that they encourage you to use all the resources that you have available. But of course, one of those important components of that mentorship experience is actually building the technical skills. So as part of the Thinkful program, you're going to be working with JavaScript and its different frameworks to learn full stack development. Now, there are a couple of reasons that we focus on JavaScript as opposed to other languages, and I want to make sure that we clearly explain those. One reason, and really the most important reason, is that JavaScript is the most widely used language in web development. You can build full stack applications with JavaScript and its different frameworks, meaning that it's also really highly versatile. A third reason is that it's constantly evolving. As a language, it's constantly changing. The tech giants like Google creating Angular or Facebook and Instagram and the community that surrounds them creating React are evidence that JavaScript and its frameworks are here to stay. It really is the programming language, at least the web development language of the future. And for that reason, the curriculum that we focus at Thinkful, that we have at Thinkful, focuses on teaching you the language that you're going to see and the jobs that you'll apply to um, when you begin switching for jobs as developers or engineers. And two, two notes here, one on, uh, like, you see all these logos and skills, but how are you actually going to learn that? Um, you're going to learn them through building projects. And the whole curriculum app is organized into clear units, lessons, assignments to help you learn the skill that you need through um, actual in-house in original content, through text, through links to any resources if you need to. Um, but the way you're actually practicing the skill is building short projects for each of the skills and then putting together all the pieces and larger capstone projects, which you know, I'll talk about in a second. Um, but the other point I want to make is that the curriculum itself evolves all the time. So when I was a student in Thinkful three years ago in our front-end web development course, um, that was on V1 of the curriculum. The content was in a Google Doc because Thinkful was just getting started as a company. And now, three years later, we're on V5 of that curriculum. And it constantly gets better and better. And that's universal throughout all our content for this week. Okay. Every mentor that works for Thinkful and every student that's part of our program has a say in how the curriculum is shaped. So if you're someone or or there was someone who didn't understand a concept or a project and they let their mentor know, the mentor will let the Thinkful curriculum team know that so that we could restructure the curriculum and make it as comprehensive as possible. Now, I wanted to give you a quick overview of what exactly you're going to cover in the program. And please don't worry about writing any of this down. We can always send you the syllabi for each the flexible and the full-time program into the chat box. You're going to start out by working with HTML and CSS, building the foundational blocks of front-end development. After that, you'll move on to learning the developer tools, like working with Git and GitHub, and learning to work from the command line. These are tools that you'll need to work as part of any development team. After that, you'll focus on JavaScript and jQuery, learning the programming fundamentals, and then moving into more intermediate front-end development with responsive design. After that, you'll jump into the back-end, learning to work with Node, MongoDB, and Express, and then wrapping up the program by working with React. Now, once you complete the JavaScript component of the curriculum, your learning isn't done. And I wanted to also highlight that as a program, the curriculum also inc includes practical computer science concepts that you'll need to succeed. These include things like data structures and algorithms that were written by Thinkful by one of the mentors that works for us who happens to be a computer science professor. Dr. Mike Lipman, um, who's worked as a professor for about 15 years, I believe, has written these projects to make sure that they're practical and that they're going to be helpful for you not only when you search for jobs, but in your future role. If you're someone who's perhaps interested in covering these concepts to a deeper level, we can always have you work with Dr. Littman himself or another professional mentor that works for Thinkful in making sure you get the most out of those projects as well. Now, as Monique mentioned earlier or just now, one of the most important components of the curriculum is that it's so project-driven. And you're going to be building several different projects while you're in the program. 
some less comprehensive and uh, smaller than others, others much more comprehensive and entirely unique. Throughout the program, you'll focus your attention on about 15 or 20 or so smaller size projects that are there, as we mentioned, to help you gain skills. These are at the beginning of the units and include things like the FizzBuzz project or your first development page. Once you get farther into the components of the program, you're going to be building at least four capstone projects that are entirely unique. These projects are meant to showcase the fact that you are able, you are able to take a product from its very beginning stages, thinking about the solution or the service that that app is going to provide, wireframing it, putting it into an MVP that you then present to your colleagues for support and for feedback. At Thinkful, your colleagues being your personal mentor, your program manager, other mentors that work for Thinkful and Thinkful HQ itself. And then getting that feedback and refactoring that project that you built into a second, more finalized version that ends up in your portfolio for review later. Once you take these portfolio pieces to a hiring manager in an interview, you're going to be able to showcase that, no, you didn't go to a program that just had you recreate sites like Airbnb or Reddit or Instagram and several online uh, boot camps do. You're going to be able to present a project that's entirely unique and student-creative that helps you stand out and leave a lasting impression. The project that you see on screen now is a great example of that. Paul Anderson, one of our more recent graduates currently working in Dallas as a developer, built an application that you see on screen now that lets the user know events that are happening in their area. The pink dots that you see on the screen represent music festivals, music events, boxing matches. I've seen uh, poetry readings and comedy nights at local bars. And you can click through the site and it'll take you to things like Ticketmaster or Live Nation, where you can purchase tickets about the event and also post on Facebook and other social media sites. I wanted to showcase this project specifically because it's something that Paul was able to take to hiring managers and present to them as something that he built in the course. He was able to share with them the project and talk about the different software architecture principles that his mentor passed on onto him when they worked together through this project. As I mentioned, you're going to be building at least four of these projects in the program, and they're going to be part of the portfolio that you use to showcase your skills to employers. Of course, we know that there's so much more to uh, getting hired as a developer than just building the technical skills and building the portfolio. And at Thinkful, the career prep program that, is, that I mentioned at the beginning of the presentation has to be comprehensive enough to prepare you for what has become one of the most competitive markets in the entire country. The web development industry is incredibly competitive, but at Thinkful, we're paying you with a career coach who's there with you from the very beginning of your, your course up until you call them and let them know that you've, you've gotten a job and that you're signing the offer uh, letter the next week. Initially, the career coach that we pair you, who is a mentor, who is a uh, professional in addition to your personal mentor, I should know and differentiate, is initially talking to you about the different um, interests that you have in the tech industry. Thinking about the types of jobs you'd like to work for, the type of company you'd like to work for, where in the country you'll be looking for jobs. And then, once you start building technical skills, the career coach is having you explore the tech industry in your area, asking you to attend hackathons or tech meetups. While you're doing that and you're building the technical skills and polishing your portfolio, you're also putting those technical skills to practice. You're going to be having at least four technical interview sessions with different mentors from within our network um, who have either been selected by Thinkful because they are senior engineers who in their many years in tenure um, at their companies have prompted a lot of these uh, interviews in real life, or their mentors that Thinkful has selected because they know exactly what to look for in terms of your performance, both the technical and the non-technical. Meaning that if during interview three, your soft skills aren't that great, you repeat yourself or you go off topic or you say something that was kind of awkward, you practice that. That we schedule a fourth or a fifth or even a sixth technical interview for you, a practice technical interview, so that by the time that you're applying for jobs, you're a master at them. Once you are closer to graduation and you've built your portfolio, you've polished your projects and you have the technical skills down, you and your career coach will work once more to review your application materials. This includes looking at your LinkedIn profile, your resume, your portfolio, GitHub account, the emails that you're sending out and crafting to companies, and also the introductory calls that you're making to introduce yourself. Once that component is all done and you're starting to find jobs and search for jobs with the guidance of your career coach, the career coach is taking it one step further. And I really want to highlight how incredibly unique this is to Thankful. This is only this is something that I only know of Thankful doing. I don't think that any other online bootcamp or any even in-person bootcamp does this, but the person that you see on screen, Liz Parsikian, is a very close colleague of mine. She is constantly growing, growing the employer network that we have here at Thinkful, uh, at Thinkful and helping career coaches introduce their grads to employers in the areas that they want to find jobs and based on the, the career goals and the skills that each individual graduate has. We're not pairing you with a recruiter who's going to take any percentage of your salary. 
We're also not sending you to a career fair where you can compete with other graduates for the same jobs. And we're never going to ask you to apply to a specific number of jobs per week. It's very important that you understand that the career prep and job support component of the program is as intensive and as comprehensive and as personal as the technical component, meaning the building the skills and crafting the portfolio. Yeah, one, one thing to note here is that uh, this is personalized and this is thorough. So when we say something like resume help, that doesn't just mean we're going to tell you what a good resume looks like and then you do it. It actually means like you submitting your resume for review, for a formal review. So that will be in a Google Doc. Liz and Gray will drop comments on the Google Doc and show you how to structure it better. And then as well as submit an even polished version of that to you over PDF. So you can learn about um, what an ideal product could look like. Similarly with the portfolio, um, some of our students in the full-time bootcamp just kind of went through this. Uh, this is a thorough process. So first we'll talk about the content you need, and then you'll start developing a wireframe, and then we'll give you feedback on that design, on that layout, and then you'll put in the content, get it together. After you have a first draft, we'll give it another review and make sure the copy is great and explains your skill set in the best possible light. Uh, we'll give another like, you know, minor design tweaks before kind of waving it off for portfolio approval. So each of these steps are thorough and they are personalized. Yeah, and overall we do this because really the success of our graduates is what's most important to think about. From the very beginning stages when you're first getting started with HTML and CSS and are being introduced to your career coach, to when you're building skills with Node.js and putting the technical skills that you have to practice by working with different mentors, to the very end when you're building that final capstone project and you get it approved by your mentor and then your career coach is setting up introductions and interviews on your behalf. The entire point of the program is to help you find a new job as a developer or engineer. And a really great way for us to highlight and celebrate the success of our graduates and also the incredibly large amount of work that everyone who works for Thankful is putting into the program is to be completely transparent about the results that our graduates can expect. I wanted to note that Thinkful is the only online, uh, online bootcamp that publishes a report with statistics on the outcomes of our graduates. We became the first online programming school to do so in January of this year. In April, we also became the first uh, programming school to have that report audited by a third party that assured that the data that you see on there is legitimate, accurate, and that the methods that we've applied are exactly as advertised. This report, as I mentioned, celebrates the success of our graduates and the hard work of everyone at Thinkful HQ, but it also serves another purpose. It gives students the tools that they need in order to make an informed decision about the boot camp that they're considering. On the report, you'll see numbers like the job placement rate that we have, which is currently at 93%. You'll also see information about our graduates and what their job titles are, ranging from software engineer to developer to web developer. We'll see how long it took them to get employed, and also see another other useful information um, about their age group or where they are in the country. Overall, it's very important that you as a student can ask us, what does the job placement rate mean? Are those full-time salary jobs? Yes. What are the job titles? We have a pie chart there uh, to show you. How many students have graduated? How old were the students? Where were they in the country? It's important that you as a student ask these questions, not only to Thinkful, but to any boot camp that you see that has a job placement rate percentage or that has the national starting salary for developers in the country, the national average is $94,000 per year. Is that number something that you pulled off of Indeed.com or Glassdoor or is that the, the salary that your graduates are making? And if so, what are those numbers? How did you quantify that data? Overall, if you want to ask any questions, uh, ask us any questions about the report, please feel free to type those into the chat box. We'll be sure to share the link to the report in the chat box after the presentation, where you'll also see the report from the accounting firm that we've worked with to create it and put it together. But as I mentioned, the report is there for two reasons, to celebrate the success of our graduates and the hard work that Thinkful HQ puts in, and to also uh, push the industry to be more transparent and honest about what their graduates can expect. Everyone here at Thinkful, our two co-founders, Errol Silver and Dan Friedman, every mentor to work with as part of the program, and everyone at Thinkful HQ behind me, very strongly believes that education requires trust, and that transparency is one of the only ways of building that trust. Another way of building trust amongst our, our uh, graduates and amongst the students that look into Thinkful is by publishing results on students that represent the real people behind the bootcamp industry. The four graduates that you see on screen now are great examples of what the Thinkful student community actually looks like. They're individuals who don't have a CS degree. They don't have a technical background. They came into boot camps as true beginners, 
maybe having spent a couple of weeks on Codecademy or Treehouse, like I'm sure many of you have, having built their first about me page with HTML or CSS, or maybe they took a class in college. But overall, they came to Thinkful with no technical experience and were able to transition onto roles as developers. Matt Morris is a great example, one of those graduates. He was actually in the um, education field before coming to Thinkful. He was working as an English teacher, focusing on English as a second language. Um, he came to the Thinkful program about, let's say, eight months ago or so, went through the course and was placed earlier this year as a developer at Real Page Inc. Emily is another great example of one of our recent graduates. She is currently working as a software engineer over at IBM. Her office at IBM is about 20 minutes north of us in the city, I would say. And before coming to Thinkful, she was someone who was very interested in the development field, particularly in writing software, and um, had worked at a number of different industries not related to tech. Rachel and Christian are two other great examples, now both working as developers in New York and in Los Angeles, respectively. Yeah. Um, we publish this data and we publish the stories of our graduates because we want to make sure that you as a thinkful, potential thinkful student know that there are graduates that were in very similar positions to you. Matt Morris and Emily, Christian and Rachel were all probably nervous about taking such a, a, an immersive approach to changing their careers, but after putting in the hard work and the effort, they were able to transition into roles as engineers and developers. Another perfect way for us to celebrate the success of our graduates is to really put all the confidence that we have in the program behind the program in the form of a guarantee. We offer a guarantee on your success. If you complete the program, you put in the effort to learn the technical skills and build a portfolio, and then you search for jobs when the time comes, if you don't find a job as a developer within six months of completing the program overall, you will refund 100% of your tuition. It's important to know that what's most important for Thinkful is that you are committed to learning and finding a job. We'll never ask you to abide by a super long list of criteria or rules that will prevent that guarantee from even applying. Instead, there are a couple of components that are important to think for, meaning that you're at least 21 years old, that you're legally able to work in the United States, and that you read and write English, or that you speak and write English to a proficient level. It's also important that you're living in an area that has a healthy job market for web development. If you're curious about the city and the country where you are, or you're potentially looking for jobs and having a healthy job market, please type it in into the chat box. You'll be surprised that there are over 35 or 40 cities across the United States that think we can guarantee a job. So please add the question into the chat box. We'll go through them together, um, or we'll tell you whether a graduate may already be working there. Now, before we uh, jump into describing the full-time program more uh, more deeply, I did want to know uh, that the full-time program and the flexible program are both focused around one-on-one -on -one mentorship. They both cover that full-stack JavaScript curriculum. And they'll offer you the same opportunities in terms of career support and the job placement guarantee. But we'll, make, we'll jump into the differences between the two. Uh, really quickly, I'll go over the flexible program. We'll dive into the full-time program first on a deeper level. Um, but yeah. Great. Cool. Point it towards me a little bit more. Sure. Cool. So the full-time web development camp. Um, it's a really exciting program. I'm actually just coming off of the graduation for the first quarter. In fact, we have balloons. Um, it was really fun today. We had all our, all of this, all of the employees at HQ huddled, huddled around the corner. And after I had final graduation remarks, um, we all threw around the balloons and said, "Congrats!" So today was a very special day. The first boot camp just graduated. Um, but to tell you more about it, um, I would compare this the full time boot camp uh, pretty similar to an in person boot camp um, for a couple of reasons. It's very um, intensive. It is a full time commitment. So you would have to quit your job if you wanted to enroll in this program. Um, it is an immersive experience. It is structured as well. So from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Eastern, you are working with uh, the students in your cohort every single day. So the same 8 to 14 students you start off with. So on August 22nd, I expect a cohort of about 10 students. You will see them every single day, over uh, Monday to Friday at least, over the next four months before graduation on December 16th. Um, so that's one thing worth mentioning is the overall structure is more similar to like a classroom environment where you know exactly what you're doing at each hour and there's a lesson plan for each specific day. And we move on from that topic after that day ends. Um, and a, a few other things to highlight that are important. Um, so first of all, um, in this program, you have an opportunity to actually pair program with other students in the um, boot camp every single day. In fact, it's mandatory. You'll be doing that for around five hours each day, 
And with this, you get to practice how to communicate with other students, how to collaborate on a project together. In the Flexible Bootcamp, you do get that experience with a mentor, but here you get time to actually work with other students while you're working through similar topics, and you do that every single day. Um, another thing worth mentioning is the live instruction. So these aren't pre-recorded lectures, um, and these aren't things that uh, that we do every other day. Every single day starts at 10 a.m. Eastern with a live seminar on a topic. So the screenshot you see on the slide is actually um, one of Cord One, who graduated today, um, but of Joe Turner, the instructor, leading a workshop on jQuery. Um, selectors, and as you can see, he asked like a question to the group, and everyone's um, chatting in the responses. So the day, the, the day of the a typical day in the boot camp is structured in that way. So at ten o'clock, you have a workshop that kind of introduces you to the topic. Then you have a round of morning pairing, and then a break for lunch, and then everyone gets back together in the same room for a group review, where each of the pairs talks and updates the group on how far they got. After that, you get back into pair programming for three hours-ish. And during both pairing sessions, you have a TA available to help you out with on-demand questions. So every single day from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Eastern, there's an instructor or a TA available with you all day, helping you and giving you the support you need to succeed. So that's definitely worth emphasizing there. Um, and then in the evening, you'll have your one-on-one -on -one mentor session, um, like, you know, Monday to Thursday every single day. Um, and then finally, the last thing to emphasize um, before we talk about the prep course in the future and a slide later is that um, you get a lot of practice in building projects in groups. Um, so today, for example, the students dem demoed their capstone project, something they worked on over three weeks and collaborated with each other uh, for that. So they got an opportunity to practice Trello management. So how to divide responsibilities amongst each other, who's going to tackle the front end, who's going to tackle the back end. They learned about wireframing and specking. And finally, they had to present the project they worked on. So four to five different times in the full-time boot camp, you will actually present something you've worked on. So you'll practice a lot of communication skills in this program. Um, so yeah, that's kind of the overall gist of the full-time boot camp. Anything about that? Yeah, I wanted to add a couple of points just to make clear that when we say TA, we also mean mentor. The TAs that work for Thinkful are professional engineers who have on average about 10 years of experience. During the pair programming sessions, they're there as TAs, but they really are mentors. They've gone through the very rigorous hiring process that Thinkful has. You'll never see someone who graduated from a Thinkful boot camp working as part of a mentor program for the web development boot camp itself. We hire engineers only, and engineers that have been working for about 10 years on average is what the, the average is overall. I also wanted to note that one of the benefits of looking into doing something like the full-time web development bootcamp that's online, as opposed to doing something in person, is that because Thinkful is an online institution, we can um, focus the resources that we have on providing you one-on-one -on -one mentorship, meaning that every student that's going through the full-time bootcamp and also the flexible bootcamp has a personal mentor that's there with them throughout the entire day. They have mentors and TAs, as we've mentioned, that are there available for the entire day. And the class sizes are smaller. You don't have to pay for real estate on a market street in San Francisco, which is incredibly expensive. We also don't have to pay for real estate in New York City or Austin or Dallas, Texas, or any other city around the United States to house 25 students, one instructor, and a couple of TAs. Instead, you have a personal mentor that's with you throughout the entire program, an instructor that's devoted to live instruction every single day, and mentors available throughout the entire program. Something that is also true for the flexible, uh, flexible web development bootcamp. The program is different in structure than the full-time program in that it really is more self-paced in nature. It's perfect for that student who can't quit their full-time job, but can expect the same opportunities out of a full-time program, both in person or online. It's perfect for someone who can study three times a week with their personal mentors, meeting over video chat with screen sharing, to do a lot of the things that Bumik mentioned students do in the other program, but with their personal mentor. You're joining a community of hundreds of other students and mentors that you can go to for help. And something very unique to Thinkful that is also not available on other platforms is live support from different mentors through office hours. The office hours are held in a very similar format to what we're doing now, actually. The application that you see on your laptop or on your computer is something that Thinkful's built, and it's what you'll use to get in touch with mentors through office hours, through your one-on-one -on -one sessions, and share your screen like we're doing now, if I had my terminal and my text editor going, we could pair program together and uh, work on a project or answer any questions you have. 
That's value that you won't get through another online program or an in-person program. You have these mentors available throughout the entire week. So even if you are working a full-time job or you have a very crazy schedule because of family and friends that keep you busy, you have the support there when you need it, as opposed to just Monday through Friday because the program is so uh, self-paced and flexible. Yeah, and to be clear, um, you can put in more hours than the 20 hours a week. It's called flexible um, for a reason. So you can get the same amount of a t uh, time <coughs> investment into this program. It's still succeed. There's goals built in. Uh, to drive accountability, so there's always someone monitoring your progress. So even though you're not wired in from 10 to 6 every day and doing something, there's someone monitoring your progress, here, whether it's your one-on-one -on -one mentor or your program manager, so someone like me, but for that program. So someone <laughs> constantly making sure you're not falling behind. Yeah, someone there keeping you accountable to the goals that um, you have set in mind because the program is self-paced and flexible. We want to make sure that you have the, the resources that you need, the support that you need, in order to succeed through a rank that requires that you're putting in about 20 to 25 hours per week or more. Now, um, we are happy to discuss the differences between the two programs in greater detail. If you have questions for the full-time program, we're happy to answer those after the info session ends now. Of course, questions for the Flexible Bootcamp. But if you are interested in the Flexible Web Development Bootcamp, please feel free to reach out in the coming week. You can always get in touch via email or schedule a call. If you're interested in the full-time program, the, uh, the next steps would be to stick around for sure because we're going to talk in very great detail about the prep course and the program overall. But to wrap up the presentation, I did want to go over the scholarships and different financing options that we have for the program. We have worked with three really incredible organizations, Girl Develop It, Operation Code, and Mother Coders, to provide all self-identifying women and U.S. military members and um, uh, veterans scholarships for the program. There's no application needed for these scholarships. You're guaranteed to receive them upon enrolling if you're eligible. And we can combine those scholarships with any of the different financing options that we have for the program. The financing options themselves include the opportunity of applying for a loan through the lender that we partner with, Skills Fund, or going through a deferred payment plan that's internal to Thinkful, no application needed. The loans in the scholarship and uh, the other payment plans are different for both options. So if you'd like to discuss those in detail, again, please stick around for the Q&A session after the presentation. But for now, we wanted to give you an overview of the payment and the financing options for the program. The flexible program as a self-paced course is at $1,500 per month. The full-time program as a set four-month program is at $14,000 total. So, um, yeah, if you have questions, please feel free to type those into the chat box now. In case you do need to step away from the room and get back to your busy day, if you are on the West Coast or you want to go out and have some fun since it's the weekend now on the East Coast, um, please feel free to send me an email at noel.thinkful.com or schedule a call with me through thankful.com. We'll be sure to keep the slides up so that if you want to reference anything that you saw, we can do that. Let's see, we have a couple sure, of questions. Should just post the financing page first? Yeah, definitely. We'll post the financing page right away so that you have that available to you. Oops. Yeah, so the tool uh, Noel is sharing is like a payment calculator that we built. So with either the full-time option or the flexible option, you can see exactly how much you would be paying depending on the payment. Um, so we'll go through some, before we go through the questions though, I just want to iterate some points about the prep course and the full-time program. Um, so the next cohort for the full-time bootcamp does start August 22nd. Um, we currently have two spots available. Um, there are six students currently in the prep course and we'll be deciding um, who to accept after they're finished. But uh, the way that works, so students who are interested in the full-time bootcamp, they have to go through a two-week prep course. The reason why? is because we can't accept students who are going to drop out after a week, you know, uh, because it really feels like a classroom. So we have you go through a two-week prep course where you basically complete the first unit of our front-end web development course, um, and you meet with the mentor, I think, for three times a week over video chat during those two weeks. And at the end of those two weeks, I will sit down with you over video chat and talk about whether um, you'd be a good fit for the program and the things we look for, just so you know, it's up our pace, so whether you're able to keep up with the pace required in the prep course, um, your projects that you submitted, and as well as personality. So we're looking for people who genuinely like programming, um, people who don't get frustrated when they get stuck, but instead understand that programming is a struggle, um, because we need people who are motivated to their peers while you're, you're programming together. Um, so it's a two-week prep course, and um, Noel is going to send a link for it now. And uh, I think you're going to mention anyway, but just to 
jump on your toes. If you click on this link, um, if you use this link to enroll in prep course, um, we are currently waiving the fee for the uh, prep course. Normally it'd be $250, that's discounted if you're getting accepted. But if you go through this prep course, um, again, only if you're interested in the full-time bootcamp, um, it'll be free of cost. And the next step immediately afterwards is setting up an onboarding call with me so I can show you exactly what you're looking on the dashboard and um, make sure you know what you should be focusing on to get ready for the August 22nd bootcamp. Um, but if you have any questions about the full-time program or the prep course, um, or a future court, like there is one starting in September, feel free to email me directly as well at gomeek.thinkful.com. I'm the one kind of overseeing the whole prep course and onboarding phase uh, coming into the boot camp as well. Yeah, but, yeah. yeah I did want to note that the, uh, the deadline to enroll in that prep course is this Monday. We have a couple of spots left in the prep course overall and fewer spots in the full-time program that begins on the 22nd. So again, the next step in preparing would be to enroll in that prep course only if you're interested in the full-time program. If you're interested in the flexible program, please get in touch with me after the presentation for any questions. Um, but yeah, to answer the question that was posted about the deadline to enroll in that, August 8th, so this Monday for the prep course, August 22nd is when the next cohort begins. We can always discuss the September 26th start date at a future time. Yeah, and actually, just to point that out, if you are interested in the future start date, you can still enroll in the prep course, and we'll just talk about it, uh, just get you prepared for that. Like, we've had a student who committed to this August cohort two months ago. We finished the prep course two months ago, and now I actually meet with them for 30 minutes every week of what you can do from now until then to get prepared. So you can enroll as early as you want for a future starting day too. So let's run through some of the questions that everyone has posted. Have any graduates gone on to work as web developers remotely? Yeah, actually, we've had at least two graduates begin remote positions. I wanted to note that remote work isn't guaranteed by the program because it is a lot more competitive to get. And that's not saying that you as a thankful graduate are not prepared for those roles, but you'll find that a lot of remote positions that are entry level, that have entry level requirements, are actually taken up by developers who are not entry level. If after working for a company for a number of years, a developer wants to find remote work, um, they'll take the pay cut. It happens often, and that, for that reason, it's not um, possible for us to guarantee remote. That said, it is possible for you to find it. So we'll help you to the same degree and the same standard that we would with any other thankful student, but we would definitely recommend taking a two-front approach at finding a job. Applying for in-person positions, not just because they are um, more appropriate for entry-level developers, but because you're going to have an incredible amount of experience that you're going to be missing out on by not working in the office with senior developers and your fellow uh, colleagues. That's the reason that you uh, move on to a senior position after working for, uh, for a company in person, that you're, you're working with senior developers who can pass on an incredible amount of knowledge onto you. So yeah, to answer your question, two of our graduates are working remote. One of them works for one of our mentors as a developer, uh, and the other one is working out of Montana, actually. Um, there's another question. I'm waiting to hear back from Skills Fund. Hopefully they give me a loan, but if they don't, what other payment options are there? Um, Noel, the, the link that he shared right before that, the slash pricing page, has the detailed payment plans. So um, I think the, you might be interested maybe in the deferred option. That is the lowest monthly fee um, outside of this goes from option. Yep. And Justin, I did want to note that I'll get back to your email. Um, I know that you have some very important questions. So after our presentation, I'll send you a much more comprehensive response to the question that you asked now and also what you noted on the email regarding the full-time versus the flexible program. And Alex, respond to my email for our onboarding call. We need to get you started. <laughs> I noticed that, I recognize that name. I've read that your, uh, another question is, I read that you're able to customize some of the developer curriculum. For example, if I wanted to learn Angular instead of React, is this true? Definitely. If you are someone who's interested in the flexible web development bootcamp, you can choose to learn Angular, and it actually may be beneficial for you to learn Angular depending on where in the country you are looking for jobs. If you're part of the full-time program, we do ask that you focus on React first, but we give you a lot of flexibility, particularly during the last or so, last few weeks or so, with yeah, there's a flex week. to yeah, learn something that uh, really benefits you. Yeah, so to follow up on the flexible bootcamp first, though, in that program, um, when you sign up for Thinkful, that's not your last conversation with a human being. You talk to people every single day. So you have a program manager like myself who onboards you. So you'll have a frank conversation about the skills that are helpful in your, in your location, in your industry. 
So just to be clear, like this is a conversation that happens together with Thinkful. So if we learn that Angular is better to learn, then you'll do it uh, in the flexible program. Um, in the full-time program, there is a specific syllabi that every student goes through from uh, syllabus <laughs> from beginning to end. Uh, um, but there's something called a flex week where students can learn any skill they want on their own, and we give them guidance towards it. So, for example, in the, the cohort that just graduated today, uh, Simon learned Angular 2, Connie learned Rails, Eli learned D3, and the other three students chose to learn React Native. Um, so there's a week actually set apart for students to focus on a skill that they're interested in that also complements their own job hunt. Now, we're going to note that's also, that's also something that's very unique to think and one of the reasons that we can do that is because we have such a high level of personal mentorship that it's possible for us to focus on you as a student individually for a component of the curriculum as opposed to the entire student body. Right. That's something that you won't get out of an in-person boot camp and that you won't get out of other online programming schools that have a sick curriculum, that has you build set projects. They don't even give you the opportunity of structuring your own capstone projects. So again, wanted to note that's very unique to think and very important for the reasons that Bonique stated. Um, next question that we have is, can graduating from Thinkful help me uh, out with getting a job in the United States or Canada, even though I'm not a U.S. citizen? Yes. So we currently can only offer the guarantee to U.S. citizens or permanent residents or someone who's legally able to work in the United States without a student visa or without a job-sponsored visa. So if you have any questions about any of that legality, please feel free to reach out. I'm happy to help. However, Regardless of whether you're a U.S. citizen and you're looking for jobs in the United States or in Canada or anywhere around the world, the career prep uh, component that I talked about, having a career coach that's with you from the very beginning, having that career coach guide you through applications, and having that career coach actually introduce you to employers in your area or where you want to find jobs, applies to every single boot camp graduate. So you can expect that we'll have graduates that are working in, in Canada, like they are. We're working currently to place some of our graduates, or we'll be working very closely very soon to pay some of our graduates in London. So we're going to grow our network of employers, not just in the United States, but also throughout the entire world. So yeah, there's actually one student that graduated about three weeks ago. His name is Emmanuel, and he's working in Canada, actually. He started out um, in Calgary, and I believe that he's looking for jobs in Montreal. So definitely uh, an international career prep and job placement component. I can answer the next one. Sure. For the flexible boot camp, can we finish in less than six months? Thus paying less. Um, yes, you can, and that's the point of calling it a flexible boot camp. If you decide to put in, so the six month frame um, was determined if you're putting in 20 to 25 hours a week. That's where that average comes from. And um, on average, a lot of our students in that program uh, tend to have like a part time job or a full time job. So they, that's, that's it. That's the amount of hours they can commit. More than that will interfere with their job. But if you can commit more hours than that, then you will will be able to finish in a short amount of time. And that's a conversation that you will talk about with your program manager as well. So again, like these kind of questions, you will talk about every single day in the program too. So just when you sign up does not mean it's over. Don't think about it for the flexible program. Don't think about it as Thinkful's program and I need a fit to it. Think about it as we're adapting to your learning style and your needs for the flexible one. But for the full-time one, there is like a strict day-by-day -day schedule, and you do have to apply for it. Um, but yeah, that kind of distinguishes the program a little bit more. So there's a little more uh, flexibility in, in how much time you're able to put in the other program. Um, yeah, I hope that answers that. And yeah. thanks, Alex. I will talk to you soon. We need to get you onboarded, man. Um, that being said, I wanted to quickly ask, maybe just get like a raise of hands or I guess a type of a Hi, in the chat box, how many of you are interested in the full-time program for this August or a future start date, and how many of you are interested in the flexible program? Kind of like wait around for a second. Full, flexible, yes, the flexible, full-time. <laughs> <laughs> said both. Flexible, full-time, oh, I get what you mean, okay. There we go. Oh, oh, I get it, yeah. Yeah, I thought about it for a second. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like putting in full-time hours. Yeah. Sorry, by the way, for saying syllabus. It's kind of like a reaction, yeah, like correct I people, get it. what's annoying. I get grammar. <laughs> I get corrected on that all the time. Okay, uh, Justin, you mentioned full-time. So if you're interested, I yeah. can jump on a call with you um, sometime this weekend. There is a sense of urgency. That's why I'm willing to talk to you this weekend, because there's two weeks left for the program. Um, oh, you just know. Um, Beth, flexible, awesome. So feel free to 
email Noel. Interested in both, figuring out which makes sense for me. Yeah, and if, if you want um, advice there and then data, feel free to schedule a call with Noel. You can help figure out which one might be a better fit. Um, if you are leaning towards the full time, I'm happy to do that call myself. I'm pretty familiar with the other program too. Um, I've been here for a while, so I kind of get, get it. Mm -hmm. Let's see. And yeah, and if, if we didn't make it clear for the flexible program, you can enroll at any time you want. Correct. Because you, it's kind of your own, you know, it's personalized for you. You're setting a pace with your personal mentor. You're setting up where you start with the curriculum based on your experience. You really can't start whenever. Another question that I have for you all, if you wouldn't mind me asking, is what part of the country or the world are you currently located in? Note from speaking to some of you already that you are in Washington State or in Texas, a couple of you in the San Francisco Bay Area, Tampa, Florida, great. Chicago, Chicago also great. Oh, let me address that for, I'm oh, sorry, go ahead. Let me, let me address the, how location affects like the full-time program. Right. So um, it is a, a specific time, so it starts at 10 a.m. Eastern um, and runs through 6 p.m. Eastern. But uh, in every single cohort, we've had students in the Pacific uh, Pacific time zone take the program. And in fact, they end up enjoying that really more because after they get used to the morning schedule, they're basically done with the structured part at 3 p.m. Eastern, or sorry, 3 p.m. local time. So then they have the rest of the day to spend reviewing, um, you know, spending time with family and friends. Um, so yeah, it does start at 10 a.m. Eastern, 7 a.m. Pacific. But if you are on the West Coast, you will get used to the schedule. In fact, you may end up enjoying it more because you have more time the rest of the day. And if you're on the East Coast and you're not an early riser like I am, then you get to enjoy a couple of extra hours of sleep and be well rested for the time the program begins at 10 a.m. on the East Coast. Um, great, we have a student from Pakistan, that's awesome. We currently have one student in the flexible program in India, actually, so even if you're all the way around the world, um, like India is to New York City, and you're in a completely different time zone, I think it's actually around 12 hours so when I was in California, Los Angeles was exactly 12 hour difference from Baghdad. So if we go east a couple of times, I think it would be right around where Pakistan and Western India is. We have mentors that are working for Thinkful throughout the world. So we can definitely pair you with someone who can meet with you at regular hours for you so that you don't have to stay up until three in the morning or four in the morning. So the flexible program would definitely be the right option for you. Yeah, a lot of European mentors, especially. Yeah, definitely. Joe, our, Joe, our lead instructor for full-time, is from England. And Shristi, the, uh, the mentor that I um, highlighted during the presentation of the slides, she's Australian. She's in Melbourne. So time zones are... Not an issue. Yeah, it's not an issue. I was going to say irrelevant, but that sounds... Yeah, irrelevant. <laughs> Less... <laughs> no, they're <laughs> definitely relevant. Um, they're relevant in scheduling, um, which is a whole other technical problem. Let's see other good questions that I generally have. What about any questions for us um, as individuals? Sometimes I get asked how I ended up at Thinkful. Um, do you guys care? Probably not, <laughs> probably not actually. <laughs> well, if you do, you can ask us and if, you, if we end up jumping on a call together. Yeah. Yes, tell us your story. So, uh, <laughs> you don't have to. <laughs> Who started Thinkful? Uh, great, so if you heard a wild laugh in the background just now, one of our co-founders, Daryl Silver, and um, Dan Friedman, those are the two co-founders that we have here at Thinkful. Daryl comes from a professional engineering background, um, having gone to Columbia, studied computer science. Uh, Dan Friedman comes from a business background, so the perfect combination for a startup, really. Business, business background <laughs> and computer science. They have yeah. both components that it takes. Yeah, he, he's, he's start, spent a lot of time focusing on the education early on. And now uh, Dan and I kind of worked really closely on making the full-time bootcamp successful and now more and more people are involved. And if you want to hear something incredibly crazy, about a week ago, actually, a week ago today, Dan, one of the co-founders, turned 25. So, yeah, let that sink in for a minute. I'm motivation. 20, motivation. I'm 23. I don't know how old you are. 25. <laughs> so, if you're not 25 yet, you still have a minute to start a, a company and start up and be as successful as Thinkful has been already. What would be an average starting salary wage for career changes? Great question. Um, as a follow-up to your question, what part of the country would you be looking for jobs in? 
it's very important to uh, acknowledge that starting salaries really vary throughout the entire country. We focus on reporting salary percentage increase um, as opposed to the individual salaries of our graduates because it's important to know that a graduate in San Francisco versus a graduate in Durham, North Carolina will see a very different starting salary. In the Chicago area, don't quote me on this, but I believe the starting salary will be right around $60,000. Um, definitely something to follow up on. So if you'd like to send me an email so I can give you more um, legitimate or more accurate estimate, please feel free to reach out. Yeah, and, and those kind of questions, just to be clear, it's not like, even if I say a city average, that shouldn't actually be too helpful for you, honestly, because it really depends on many other factors. So right. things like background beyond programming, like what did you do before? Um, other kinds of professional experience you have. So if I came right out of college versus someone who already have 10 years of personal yeah. professional experience, something else, the latter group might have a higher salary. So even even with those numbers, please consider a lot of external factors in it too. Yeah, definitely. However, there are general trends that you can expect in a place like San Francisco, for example. You can reasonably expect your starting salary to be right around $80,000 or higher. Um, to balance up what Bamik said, one of our, or two of our most recent graduates in Dallas, Texas, are both currently making $65,000, but the average starting salary in Dallas tends to be around $55,000, and a couple of different factors could have influenced that. It could have just been absolutely great because they graduated from Thinkful, or they also had professional experience like Matt did. So it's important to note that, yeah, there are a lot of different factors that affect your salary. When you get to the program and you're focusing on career prep and the job placement component, you and your career coach are also going to talk about salary negotiations, and that's a very important component to understand that, you, yeah, sorry, yeah. that you as a developer do have the, the, uh, the option and really have the right to negotiate your salary. You're someone who has a very in-demand skill, and if you've made it that far in the interview process, they clearly want you. Yeah, the, the other point I just wanted to make is that this is your first job. When you get hired, that's your first job. We want you to keep working hard, keep learning, so you get a promotion at that job, you get a, uh, a salary bump, maybe you go on to move to a second job. So like during graduation today, we we spent a lot of time emphasizing that too. To the flex program, do I have to do the two week prep course? No, the prep course is only for the full-time program. For the flex program, you can enroll at any time. And there's another question that uh, says, would you suggest the data science program over other developer programs? Because I am interested in learning and finding a job in the data analysis department. If you're interested in finding a job in the data analysis department of a specific company or in that general industry, then yeah, the data science program would definitely be a better fit. However, there is a good amount of overlap between data science work and web development. You, you might not initially think about that, but both on the front end and the back end. If you're someone who's a back-end developer and you already work with data, like some of our engineers who do at Thinkful, um, you can work as a data scientist like one of our engineers, Bill, does. He does a lot of uh, work with databases and a lot of work with database architecture. On the other side of the coin, on the front-end development side, technologies like jQuery and D3.js, which is a library for front-end development for visualizing data, are very powerful tools to visualize data in a very aesthetically appealing way. So it would be helpful even if you are a data scientist to know some JavaScript, know some jQuery perhaps, and also have an understanding of industry standards and data science like Python, which are also very powerful tools for web development. Now we are coming up to the seven o'clock Eastern time mark, um, which is generally when the presentations or the, the Q&A sessions are over, but we're happy to stay as long as we need to answer any questions. Um, these are actually very interesting questions, very great questions that we're getting from everyone. So very happy that's the case. Yeah, and actually, I just wanted to ask, so I've seen a couple of people enroll in the prep course. Um, so if you uh, please let me know, send me an email at filmweek.thinkful.com if, uh, if you did not mean to enroll in it, because I know that, Beth, you just asked if I'm interested in the Flex program, do I have to do the two-week prep course? Um, you do not. Um, so if, if, if anyone who accidentally enrolled in the prep course, just let me know. But remember that the prep course is specifically for students interested in the full-time program. I'll duck out and send you an email there in a bit. We'll have a few questions to set up a call. Yeah, you're very welcome, everyone. Um, I look forward to great. When does the next enrollment for full-time start? Great question. The enrollment for the full-time program for this month in August 
The deadline for the prep course is this Monday. You can enroll starting today, get started on that, and really help you prepare. After August 22nd, the next full-time program will begin September 26th. So you can um, you can enroll in both the program now or the one in September. Please feel free to reach out to Dominique if you are interested in the program that begins uh, this August. It's imperative that you get started on that as soon as possible. Yeah, it's great to chatting with you all, and um, Wait, feel free to. There's another question. Have you met people who are writers who really enjoy coding for its similarities? Yeah, actually. So our head of curriculum, Ben White, is a professional engineer. He's been working for Think as an engineer for many years, and he's coming from also a non-technical background. He studied anthropology, I believe it was in college, mm -hmm. um, and he's an PhD. PhD. He's an incredible writer. Obviously, wrote an entire dissertation and PhD pieces. Um, he really enjoys writing. One of the reasons that he's our, our um, head of curriculum because he's someone who just is naturally incredible at programming, but also knows how to write really well. So yeah, um, you'll find some similarities. And I'm sure that if you hopped on the Slack and asked fellow students or other mentors what their backgrounds are, you'd be surprised to know that there are a couple of students in there that probably have pretty strong writing backgrounds. Great. Yeah. That said, um, we would like to thank everyone once more for joining us for the uh, Web Development Bootcamp Info Session. If you do have any feedback for us about the session that you'd like to type into the chat box, don't worry, it's all anonymous. Uh, we do take that feedback very seriously, and we're constantly trying to improve um, how we interact with students just to make sure that it's something that really benefits you since you're taking the time out of your day to join us. Other than that, we hope that everyone has a great weekend. Those of you that have just started with the prep course, uh, buckle up. You're going to have a wonderful ride. Everyone else, I look forward to speaking with you one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah, the people who are on the prep course, I'm sending you an email right now after the end of the call. Please reply to that email of when you can meet for our onboarding call. If you accidentally enrolled in the prep course, uh, reply to so I know that uh, you did not intend to uh, for the full-term program. But have a great day, everyone. All right. Great rest of the evening. Icons for users might be better. Perfect. <laughs> Bye.